today I just want to let you guys know that I just finished installing the VC Racing coilover on my uh, E46 M3 here. Um, yeah, it took me like quite a while, like about a day to do that because this is my first time uh, doing the VC Racing coilover on the E46. Um, this is an M3 and uh, I kind of go back and forth watching the, you know, you guys YouTube video how to install the, the coil on this kind of car um, so that's why it took me like all one day just to finish it make sure I do it correctly just to watch you guys video and uh, yeah after it's done it seemed like it looked like it's okay and I love it personally and look like it's, it's look pretty good the height and everything but uh, you guys will uh, you know comment below I will do a walk around see how my uh, insulation uh, is that that correct height or not is that it's gonna rub or anything like that i will you know i, I do a lot of measurement as well make sure everything is you know even out on both sides uh, in this case i did measure the front is a little bit higher half an inch higher rear is uh, exactly 23 uh, inch from the base of the wheel to the fender on both and uh, the front is 23 and a half so comment below and let me know uh, if this is correct height for this kind of car for the coil over so yep and uh, yeah just uh, if you have time just watch the video how i installed the bc racing coil over on this car thanks guys for watching bye peace on my cars over here in, in uh, one uh, car garage this is a two car garage over here it's a little bit bigger all right let's do it Now the car's back in. I can start work on it. <coughs> can lower it down to maybe like a one finger. That's what I want to do. At this point, the car running at uh, stock uh, suspension, and uh, that's what I want to change. All right, let's uh, jack up the car and then go from there. Hopefully I can do this. Okay, now the wheel is out. So what I'm going to do to access to this uh, uh, linkage arm here, I'm going to turn the wheel to the passenger side so I have more room to access to remove this uh, strut uh, link bar here. You can see I have more room. Now, first thing I'm going to do, just going to remove this bolt that hold the, the linkage arm here and then I'm gonna go down here and remove this um, I think this is like 18 millimeter or 16 millimeter I don't remember bolt here that hold this assembly that hold the strut assembly basically that's the only two things that you need to remove 
Now once this thing's come loose, this whole uh, caliper or um, rotor here might just drop down a little bit. So I would want to use a jack just to support down here so it won't, you know, completely fall down, uh, causing all these, uh, stressing all these uh, cable, break, fluid, break cable here. So that's what you want to do. Let's remove the link arm first and then followed by this uh, bolt down here that holds the strut assembly. All right, this is a 16 uh, millimeter head screw nut. So since this is a stock clean comb, when you remove, you're using a 16 over here and you need another um, open wrench to hold to remove the nuts over here. So our oh, alley is going to keep spinning. back into where it's belong in case now the next step is to remove this bolt here before the whole assembly drop down so I'm going to use a jack on the bottom to, to support it when I release this bolt here See what I'm trying to do right now is try to line up these uh, pin here, these little dowel pin here, that uh, part of the coilover assembly. It has to line up with these uh, slot here. So I just want to make sure that pin go right into the slot. You know, or else your your um, coil assembly can turn back and forth. So that will lock in between that slot of that pinch here so that's uh, what I'm trying to do right now seem like it's pretty much lined up now this pin into the slot so I can raise up the whole uh, I'm gonna jack here to help raise it up yep it's lined up went in Okay, now you can see the little uh, dowel pin there. So make sure that dowel pin goes slide in between there, and, and then you will torque this down. This here, which is 18 millimeter, to hold down the strut assembly. In this case, the pin is in perfectly, and it is already bottom out. So it's time for me to tie that 18 bolt. Now, I just need to. Uh, Tight, screw this back in and install the linkage I need to remove this uh, stock linkage and put this uh, linkage that came with the coilover assembly much different the stock one is pretty long Yeah. 
I would leave it alone. Um, you don't want to touch it at this point because it's a it's set from a preset from the factory. Um, since I, uh, you know, not doing any tracking or racing anything like that, um, that preload compression is it. It's set for a regular street uh, ride. But uh, I might adjust the height here. Either I need to lower down or I need to raise it up. That's the only thing. So what you want to do, if you want to do the to raise it up or lower it down, you just lose this bottom here, and then make sure these two are tight, and then just turn this, you know, clockwise. It's to uh, counterclockwise this way. It's to so. The driver's side, I mean the passenger side that I finished. You can see right there. Sweet. It's done. Alright, I'm done with the uh, front. Uh, over so I'm just gonna work on the rear next uh, first of all I'm gonna take out the wheel oh man that wheel is so sick look at that brand new uh, Michelin Pilot Sport 4S um, I'm running a uh, 275 30 ZL19 First thing you want to do is to uh, remove these uh, nut here that hold the strut. And then we'll, uh, once you remove it, the whole assembly will drop it down. And then you can uh, try to uh, pull out the spring. Well, sometimes it's kind of hard, even though this thing, the whole assembly drop, you probably need some pry bar to kind of help push it down a little bit more in order to pull this out. That's all I, I saw this uh, in, in YouTube. They did a pretty good job. I've 
it looks pretty simple it's not that hard it's just that you know you need to uh, kind of work with it to get it out and then when you get the spring out you can you go up a trunk and unbolt these two uh, things like maybe like 13 millimeter on top to take out the, the shock here that's it and just put it back with the you know reverse process this to hold it. I know this thing will drop down already. But uh, now let's go up to the trunk and up the trunk. Pull it out. Pull the whole uh, panel. Cop it out. And also this here easier access put it right there for now and then there's two um, thumb screw here that you can just remove it and take these out it's easy just turn it come out take it out and lift this up Take the battery cover out. So make sure you don't lose this uh, um, this uh, clip here and these the two uh, thumb for the battery tray cover. And then you can and I also um, remove this light cover already, um, which is uh, this here. Is the light here? So. Again, it's pretty simple. All you gotta do is just, you know, push this tab forward like that, and that will pop up. So break, but uh, just kind of gently, and then just pull your cup out again, and then you will have access to the two muffs there. It's pretty simple. These two nuts here. That hold on to the rear shock. I'll just put the cover. Well, anyway, you can feel it. There's one and two. There's one right here, and there's another side. There's two of them. Just, just remove that. I think there's like 13 millimeter. And that's it. And the rear shock will drop down. So, some of the E46. Well, this is an M305. Some of the E46, it's not an, uh, it's not an M3. They might have a uh, sound deadening or something like that, and you have to, you know, kind of, you know, peel it off and to access to uh, this two of nut here. So in my case, this M3 doesn't have a sound deadening thing, so it's easy. I don't have to uh, strip out anything like that, which is cool. So, all right. Let's uh, go down and move the spring and just come up here and remove the shock. Take once. <coughs> and then uh, I'll take down the two uh, 13 millimeter. Okay, I also 
also for the rear shock I bought this uh, from ACS tuning is a reinforced rear reinforced plate you can see that's a part number for the rear shock as well so I'm going to put that on that's a highly recommended I should uh, do that when you replace it so I bought two for both sides left and right this going to go on top And then when you slide it from the bottom up and this is going to come out on top of it and put it on I guess that's what that's how it is no I'm not playing with this or anything like that I'll leave it the way it you know it, it came in from the factory and this I want to uh, adjust it later on or I can play around with the spring. Um, the spring it comes with the adjuster as well. Let's install the shop now. I'm gonna use the paper uh, gasket from the existing uh, shop here. You need to have a paper gasket here. This shop doesn't come with it. So the paper gasket is still in good condition, so I'm going to use it. Insert the paper gasket. Then, when you put it on to the car, make sure you put this uh, in the not under the car this is when the shop is already installed in the car and then put this on top and then you know screw it down Okay, so now let's put back the liner.
this screen so you can get these uh, adjuster right here you can move around and adjust to go up or down and the next thing I'm going to do is to pull out that uh, stock screen shorter but uh, this one is fixed you cannot adjust the height or anything like that and uh, the BC spring it has this uh, perch that you can uh, adjust the height and uh, you know whatever the height you want that's why it's uh, the spring itself is pretty short so with that perch adjustment you can raise it up you can raise it up or lower it or whatever you want so now I don't know which way you should use so I'm just thinking that uh, because of the, the way the text written this way and the purge said that spring purge mounts on top of the spring so if the way the text reading this way this is the top of the spring so that where's the perch going to be mounted on top of the spring. So I'm going to go this way. And these here is going to go on the bottom. That's how I understand it. Because of this uh, label on the perch. The label on the perch here is that uh, perch uh, mount on top of the spring. So that's how I'm going to do it. You're going to just put that way. And the perch go on top of this, and then I will use this, slide back on top, and just put it in. So I'm gonna try to use all the um, stock uh, rubber to put it back on. This is clean, bottom here is clean. Now once uh, everything is in, I'm going to use the jack to uh, raise it up. Okay. So these shock will line up with these uh, knuckle hole here. The jack will help raise it up.
the perch gonna be on the top I saw a lot of a uh, mixed review on YouTube some people put this on the bottom and the reason why they want to put it on the bottom maybe it's easier to adjust your height but uh, most of the case uh, I think manufacturer recommend you to put it on the top instead of on the bottom so if that's the case I'm gonna go with the manufacturer recommendation it's gonna be a little hard to adjust it but uh, I don't think I'm gonna adjust anything like that so that's how I'm gonna do it running here is uh, 255 35ZL19 in the front so uh, I hope it's not gonna rub when I turn that's right so I should go guys a complete coil over system suspension on my E46. Love the rear, so nice. I hope it's not gonna rub when I go on it. Or something like that. I set this all the way to the top. I'll show you what I mean. Okay, here's my uh, perch adjustment. Um, I want to adjust up to um, driver side. I adjust to 1.5305 inches. So I'm going to do the same thing on the passenger side. Okay, 1.53, which is I measure from the shoulder of the big. Uh, I don't know what you call this, the big uh, ring here to the top of this uh, um, perch. So, just have a look. Right there. 
Okay, I got 1.5, uh, 3, 5. So it's pretty close. Okay, guys, I'm done with the installation of the DC Racing Coil DR series. This is, my, this is my first time changing the suspension for the E46 M3. So I'll let you see. Here she is.